Namaste and a very, very good morning to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, uh, The Outlier. In today's presentation, we'll be looking at how to construct a histogram with the help of uh, the Seaborn library. Now, uh, I will uh, grab a data set which is known as uh, the HR data set uh, to demonstrate uh, how to uh, construct a histogram. As you know, histogram is a very, very important uh, plot, especially when you are checking uh, whether uh, the variable follows uh, normal distribution or not. A histogram uh, tells you two things. Uh, one is uh, the shape uh, of the curve. Uh, it also uh, tells you uh, the spread of the curve. The shape and the spread, uh, these are two uh, important things uh, that the histogram uh, tells you. Uh, I am uh, working on Jupyter Notebook. Uh, let me explain a few uh, basic commands that I have run to uh, fetch the data set. I have uh, imported uh, the Pandas library. I'm sure that most of you uh, already have Pandas library. And in line number 94, what I'm doing is uh, I am uh, importing uh, the file that I'll be working on. The name of the file is uh, hr.csv. As you can see uh, this particular preview, you can see some of the important variables uh, that we have. We have variables like ID, employee ID. We have the employee's gender. We have the birth date of the employee. Then we have uh, the education level of uh, the employee. We have the job category. We have uh, salary, beginning salary, job time, previous experience, and whether a person belongs to the minority community or not. So the head uh, function gives you the preview of the data set. What I'm doing in the next uh, line is to drop uh, any missing cases. There's a simple function now, uh, which is known as uh, drop NA. Uh, this uh, basically uh, drops uh, missing cases, uh, if any. Let me check uh, uh, the shape of the distribution. As you can see, I have got 474 cases and uh, 10 variables. So my sample size is uh, 474, and the number of variables that I have uh, is uh, 10, right? Uh, now, uh, at this stage, uh, what I'll do is uh, I will import uh, the Seaborn library. Seaborn library, as you all are familiar, uh, is a very, very important and a powerful library used for data visualization. The next command uh, is uh, important. Uh, you can use this uh, dunder uh, to check uh, the version of uh, the Seaborn. Uh, the commands that I'll be showing you uh, in today's presentation are uh, applicable uh, for versions uh, 0 0.11 uh, and above. If you're using uh, a version, a Seaborn uh, version, which is below 0 0.11, you might want to uh, change it. Uh, you might want to upgrade uh, the version of your Seaborn uh, 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 library, right? So this, is, uh, this uh, uh, command helps you check uh, the version of Seaborn. Now, uh, <clears throat> let us... Uh, uh, run a simple uh, command, which is known as sns.distplot, right? sns.distplot SNS uh, would give you uh, the histogram for a particular variable. Let me open uh, the parenthesis. Uh, the variable that I will be using, right? let me just uh, show you the variables. I've got the variable salary here, which is a scale variable. I uh, want to run uh, a histogram uh, for the variable salary. Let me pass the variable. Uh, let me pass the variable salary here. Right, uh, I have not uh, given uh, the file reference. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the name of the file is uh, EMP. So let me just say EMP.salary. Uh, though it uh, produces a histogram, uh, you can see here, uh, there's a warning message, right? Uh, this is what happens. Uh, it says uh, the dist plot is a deprecated function. So uh, the dist plot, uh, which you're familiar with, uh, is uh, deprecated, and it will work uh, for the earlier version. Uh, for uh, the version, uh, for the newest version of uh, Seaborn, instead of uh, the dist plot, uh, you can just change this from dist plot to hist plot and execute this. What you see is a beautiful uh, histogram, right? Uh, you can see a histogram and uh, my first impression uh, when I look at this uh, particular uh, uh, plot is that uh, it is positively skewed. The variable uh, salary is uh, not uh, normally distributed, right? Uh, this is uh, one of the first uh, methods in which uh, you can construct a histogram. Let me just uh, show you uh, the second method uh, <coughs> of constructing uh, the histogram. I'm gonna use the same function. Hist plot. 
But here, what I can do is I can specify uh, the X uh, argument. And within quotes, I'm going to specify a uh, variable. My variable uh, is salary. I'll have to explicitly mention uh, uh, the data set that I'm working on. So the data that I am working on is M data set, right? So sns.his plot, you can uh, use the X argument. You can uh, call out uh, the continuous variable that you are interested in, and then you can uh, uh, specify the data set name. Let me run this uh, code. As you can see here, uh, you uh, are getting a histogram. Each of these bar, uh, bars represent uh, different uh, pins, different buckets of salary. And on the y-axis, you have uh, the count uh, or the number of employees uh, who belong to uh, that particular bucket. Now, there are a couple of interesting things that you can do with uh, this particular uh, code, right? Uh, let me just copy this. Paste it uh, in the next line. Instead of X, I can just uh, type Y here, execute this. What you see here uh, is that you've been able to uh, flip from a vertical histogram to a horizontal histogram. So this is what uh, 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 this is what the argument X uh, helps us. You can uh, uh, you can either use a vertical histogram or a horizontal histogram. I'll change it to X as before, right? Now, uh, along with this, uh, you can specify other uh, important uh, parameters uh, here. Uh, one important uh, parameter is uh, color, right? So color is an argument as the name itself suggests uh, you can uh, change the color uh, if you want. Uh, let me just uh, type indigo here. So the color of the histogram would change uh, to indigo. Uh, if you want, you can again uh, change this to green. Pretty simple, right? So the color, uh, uh, the color argument uh, allows you to change the color of the histogram. Uh, in the earlier uh, Seaborn uh, plot, you had uh, uh, you had an argument uh, known as KDE. Uh, you can uh, <clears throat> use the same argument uh, again here. KDE, as you know, stands for uh, kernel density function. I can just say KDE and set the option to true. KDE basically gives you a, a continuous uh, smoothed out uh, version of uh, the histogram. Uh, it uh, helps us uh, find out uh, the probability density function of uh, uh, the variable, right? So you can see the KDE, right? If you do not want the KDE, and if you want to keep this very, very simple, you can just uh, remove the KDE option, right? Now, let me just co uh, copy this entire code, paste it below. Now you've seen uh, the color uh, argument. Along with this, uh, you've also seen the KDE, uh, uh, KDE property. Now, uh, I'll be making a move on to the next uh, important uh, feature here, which is uh, the bins, right? Now, you can specify the bin width here as five. It says attribute uh, error. Let me look at the error. It has no property bin width. It's right. Uh, I don't have to specify bin width. What I need to do is just uh, type bin. Bin is equal to five. Right. And this is how uh, the histogram uh, would look like. Right. Uh, on the other hand, uh, as you can see here, uh, what uh, bins is equal to five does is uh, it uh, sort of constructs uh, five different buckets. You can see the five different uh, buckets here, uh, uh, which gives you more like a macro level uh, view into the variable. On the other hand, uh, if you want a more uh, granular uh, view into this particular variable, you can change the bins uh, from five uh, to 15. Right? So this gives you more uh, like a, a micro level perspective or a granular level perspective wherein each of the bins uh, would be uh, would be uh, each of the bins uh, would be extended to 15 uh, 15 different bins uh, in uh, the x axis and the corresponding count employee count is given uh, on the y axis now uh, for some uh, reason if you are very very specific 
and you want to specify the start location as well as the stop location, what you can do is uh, you can uh, specify your own uh, cut point. You can choose uh, 25,000. You can choose uh, uh, 40,000. You can choose 50,000. As you can see here, uh, it, this is uh, unequal uh, space uh, bins that I'm uh, giving. After 50,000, uh, I uh, want to give 80,000. And then uh, 150,000. I think I'm going to get an error here. Not really. So once uh, you specify uh, the bins here, uh, what uh, Seaborn does is uh, it uses the uh, it uses the numbers that you have specified uh, in the list as the start location as well as the stop location to construct uh, the histogram. So this is a very very uh, interesting feature about uh, the his plot uh, that you are seeing uh, in front of you. So we've looked at uh, uh, changing the colors. We've looked at uh, the KDE. We have also looked at uh, how do we specify uh, the bins. The next important uh, thing which I'd like to talk about is uh, the properties. So let me just uh, copy this. One important property that you can uh, specify here uh, is uh, the stat option. Right? A stat option uh, is very, very uh, useful. You can just say stat equals uh, count. And as you can see here uh, in the Y axis, uh, what you are uh, uh, given is the count of the employee, right? Now, there are a couple of other interesting uh, options uh, apart from count. What you can do uh, here is instead of count, you can specify uh, the option density, right? Now, when you specify uh, the density, uh, please recall that uh, the area of the histogram uh, will be equal to one, right? Uh, in the y-axis, uh, what you're seeing is nothing but the density. And in uh, the x-axis, you're seeing the different, uh, <clears throat> the different categories uh, of salary. Uh, if you take for each of the bars, if you take the height of the bar and multiply it uh, by the width, Right, and take the sum of uh, each sum uh, of uh, uh, the sum product of height and width uh, for each of the bars. It will add up to one uh, because the area of the histogram equals one. Right now, there's one additional thing that I can do uh, instead of uh, density. I can uh, use another option here, which is probability. Now, uh, when it comes to probability from density, we have moved on to probability. As you can see here, uh, the height of the bar uh, now corresponds to the probabilities and the sum of the probabilities. If you look at uh, for each of these uh, uh, buckets, if you look at uh, the probabilities, if you take the probabilities and add it up, it will add to one. So uh, this is another important uh, and an interesting feature about uh, hist plot. Now I uh, make a move on to uh, one of the last uh, one of the last options that I uh, wish to show you, and that is uh, hue. Many times uh, we work with uh, categorical variables. Uh, when you have a categorical variable, how do you deal with this? Right. Let me remove this particular option uh, stat. Right. When you have a categorical variable, what you can do is you can specify uh, the option hue, and uh, here. Uh, you can specify uh, the variable of your choice. Now, is there a categorical variable in my data set? I see two categorical variables. One is gender, and the second one is, uh, is job category. Though it is reading it as numeric, uh, it's actually a categorical variable. Uh, right, so gender. So this is a variable that, uh, which I'll be using. So let me just uh, type the name of the variable gender. What you're able to see uh, is uh, a histogram. Uh, you see, uh, you see uh, two different uh, colors. Uh, the uh, one uh, color uh, that corresponds to uh, the males, and the second one uh, corresponds to uh, the females. Uh, 
uh, and there is some overlapping uh, region as well. But uh, uh, after 60,000, what you see is a complete domination of uh, the blue color, which uh, is uh, which the blue color corresponds to males, which means that uh, in the high salary bins, you have a domination of the males. So uh, this is uh, about uh, hist plot in uh, the seaborne. I would like to quickly recap uh, what we have uh, done today. We imported uh, we imported uh, <clears throat> the data set, which is uh, called as uh, hr.csv. We dropped the missing uh, cases. We checked uh, the sample size uh, and the number of columns. We imported the library SNS, checked out the version of uh, SNS, right? For the newest version of SNS, uh, that is 0.11 and above the hist plot uh, can be used to construct uh, the histogram. There are two different ways in which you can construct the histogram. One is to specify the variable uh, as it is. Second one uh, is to <clears throat> use the variable name uh, with, uh, within the X uh, argument, right? You will ha also have to mention the name of the data set. So what this does is it helps you flip uh, from, a, uh, from a horizontal histogram, you can uh, also sort of uh, get uh, the vertical histogram by changing uh, X to Y. The next thing is to basically change uh, the color uh, of the histogram. You have different uh, options uh, within color. You can check out these uh, options. We also uh, looked at how to uh, specify the bins, right? The number of bins, if you want, you can specify uh, uh, under the bins option. If you want uh, to specify the start location and the stop location, you can uh, pass the start and the stop uh, values uh, within a list. Nextly, uh, within the stat argument, you have three different options. Uh, one is uh, area. My apologies, it's not area. One is count. Second one is uh, probability. And the third one is uh, density. We explored each of these uh, options. And finally, for a categorical variable, uh, <clears throat> you can uh, use the feature Q, right? I had the variable gender, so I constructed the histogram uh, and compared uh, the distribution for uh, males and females. <clears throat> With this, uh, I come to uh, the end of uh, today's uh, demonstration. I uh, thank you very much uh, for watching uh, this video. I kindly request you to subscribe to my channel, uh, The Outlier. I will uh, see you in my next video. Thank you very much.